There is officially less than one month remaining of the 2023-24 NFL season, with four teams left entering Sunday. The one seed in the AFC Baltimore Ravens, one seed in the NFC San Francisco 49ers, the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs, and the Detroit Lions. The Lions have a reputation of being one of the NFL's all-time worst franchises. Since the beginning of the Super Bowl era, Detroit had a playoff record of 1-12 before this season, with that one win coming over three decades ago in 1991. The Lions are one of 12 franchises to never win a Super Bowl, but they're also one of four franchises to never even appear in one. In 2007, the Lions became the first NFL organization to lose all 16 games played in a single season. Basically, their fan base has been witnessing nothing but pain and misery their entire lives. But so far, this season is different. Their 12-5 record is their best since that 1991 season, which was good enough to lend them their first division title since 1993. While this upcoming game against the 49ers on Sunday will in all likelihood be the best chance they've ever had at making a Super Bowl. But if you would have told a Lions fan following the 2021-22 season that all of this would be happening just two years later, not a single one of them would believe you, because at that time, they were one of the worst teams in the league, with almost nothing to be excited about for the future. So in this video, we're going to break down the incredible rebuild of the Detroit Lions, and how they went from worst to first in such a short period of time. Before I get into it, welcome to the War Room, we're officially on the road to 100k, so please consider subscribing to the channel if you're new and let's get straight to it. So earlier this season, I released a video about the 49ers and how they built their incredible roster. I figured since these teams are facing each other this weekend, this video about the Lions will be the same format as that one. For those unfamiliar, I narrowed it down to eight key players on this 2023 Lions team that played the biggest part in turning this franchise around. In chronological order, we're going to discuss how the Lions acquired each of these guys and the importance of their role as they enter this NFC Championship game. Starting off with two key non-players, head coach Dan Campbell and general manager Brad Holmes. In the middle of the 2020 season, the team fired head coach Matt Patricia before he even completed his third year with the team. That same day, general manager Bob Quinn was fired as well. Detroit ended the year with a 5-11 record, finishing in last place in the NFC North for the third year in a row. It was abundantly clear that if there was any shot this franchise was going to be turned around, it needed to start at the top of the organization first. The men who filled these vacant spots needed to be the the perfect guys for the job. Otherwise, the cycle of hiring new guys, missing the playoffs for a few years, and then firing them was going to continue. And today, I think it's safe to say that Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes were exactly what this franchise needed. As far as coaching goes, there's no stat to really prove how good of a job Dan Campbell has done, but there's no doubt that he changed the culture of Detroit football for the better, and he is the leader this team desperately needed. As far as Brad Holmes is concerned, you can tell how good a general manager has been based on the draft picks, trades, and signings he's made. And considering all the key players he's acquired that I will now begin to cover, he's done a hell of a job. That brings us to key player number one, Jared Goff. A few months after Holmes was hired, he made his first splash as GM, and it was a big one. On March 18th, 2021, veteran QB Matthew Stafford, who spent all 12 of his NFL seasons with the Lions up to that point, was traded to the Los Angeles Rams in exchange for quarterback Jared Goff, a third round pick in 2021, plus two first round picks in 2022 and 2022 respectively. Looking back, this is one of the greatest win-win trades in maybe the history of the NFL, but at that time, Goff still had a lot to prove. As the Lions front office surrounded Goff with better pieces, he took his game to the next level. Two of those pieces were with Goff during the 2021 season, and both of them were products of Holmes's first draft class. In the first round with the seventh overall pick, he selected offensive lineman Panay Sewell. For years leading up to this, the Lions O-line was held down by Frank Ragnow and Taylor Decker, but this this addition of Sewell proved to be very helpful in the following years. Key player number three came in round number four, when Detroit selected wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown. The draft overall for the team this year was solid, but Sewell and St. Brown would later prove that they were the highlights of this 2021 class. Amon Ra had an outstanding rookie year in 2021, catching 90 passes with 912 receiving yards and five touchdowns, while Sewell started 16 games up front. However, the team finished with a 3-13-1 record, and that Matthew Stafford guy they traded a year prior ended up winning the Super Bowl in his first year with the Rams. Despite Goff, St. Brown, and Sewell giving the organization a foundation for the rebuild, Brad Holmes knew that they needed more if there was any chance at competing, especially on defense. In 2021, Detroit ranked 31st in points allowed per game and 29th in yards allowed per game. So in the 2022 draft with the second overall pick, they selected key player number four, defensive end Aiden Hutchinson. Two rounds later, they selected another valuable piece on 
on defense, safety Kirby Joseph. These two additions, plus the young players they already had progressing another year, was enough for this franchise to improve significantly in 2022. That season, they went 9-8. Jared Goff was great, as his 4,400 passing yards and 29 touchdowns to 7 interceptions sent him to the third Pro Bowl of his career. Sophomore Amon Ross St. Brown made his first career Pro Bowl after tallying over 1,100 yards receiving with 6 touchdowns. Sophomore Panay Sewell was sent to his first Pro Bowl as well, as he provided tons of help to the offensive line. The rookie Aiden Hutchinson's 9.5 sacks and 3 interceptions made him an All-Pro and the runner-up for Defensive Rookie of the Year, while the safety Kirby Joseph was a big help, tallying 4 interceptions which was tied for 3rd most in the league. After going years without any sign of being legitimate playoff contenders, this 2022 Detroit season got the fans, and I'm sure the players, to buy into Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes' plan. This franchise already proved that they could go from garbage to somewhat respected after just one year, so what's to stop them from going from somewhat respected to a bona fide Super Bowl contender? That was the mentality from this organization heading into the offseason. In March of 2023, they added a running back, signing former Bear David Montgomery to a three-year $18 million contract, which most would consider today as an absolute steal. But that's not all. To really solidify the running game, Detroit selected Jameer Gibbs 12th overall in the 2023 draft. And lastly, the final key player the Lions acquired came in the second round of that draft, where they took tight end Sam Laporta. This was obviously a very quick recap of how they got all eight guys. So now it's time to break down this 2023 season and how they did together. Well, Jared Goff proved that 2022 wasn't a fluke, and he's still very capable of being a starting quarterback in the NFL, throwing for over 4,500 yards and his most touchdown passes since 2018. Amon Ross St. Brown, who blossomed into an absolute superstar, finished with 119 receptions, good for over 1,500 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns. He somehow didn't make the Pro Bowl for this season, which is reason number 2 million of why the Pro Bowl is an absolute joke, but he was named first team All-Pro for the first time in his career. The combo of Taylor Decker, Frank Ragnow, and Panay Sewell on the O-line gave the Lions the second best ranked offensive line in the league this season. Sewell played almost 1,200 snaps this year, with the second highest run blocking grade from an offensive tackle in the past five seasons. His approximate value, which is essentially a number that shows how valuable a player is, was an 18. Just for reference, Christian McCaffrey and Tyreek Hill's AV this season was also an 18, while Lamar Jackson, who's the favorite for MVP, has an AV of 19. In other words, if we lived in a world where offensive linemen could realistically be part of the MVP conversation, Panay Sewell would be in that conversation. He's also a superstar in just his third year in the league, and he has rightfully been voted first team All-Pro and a Pro Bowler for this season. For the running game, the combo of David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs has been phenomenal. Montgomery had the second thousand yard rushing season of his career, with a career high 13 rushing touchdowns, while the rookie Gibbs tallied over a thousand yards from scrimmage with 10 rushing touchdowns touchdowns of his own. And by the way, that other rookie on offense, Sam Laporta, who plays tight end, is a superstar too. His 86 catches broke the rookie record of receptions for a tight end in a single season, previously held by Keith Jackson in 1988. He also tallied 889 receiving yards, fourth most all-time for rookie tight end, and caught 10 touchdowns, second most all-time for rookie tight end. This made him second team all-pro and a pro bowler. Not a bad rookie season. On defense, Kirby Joseph once again tallied four in interceptions, and though he's still yet to land any All-Pro or Pro Bowl selections in his career, don't be surprised if you see him there in the future. And lastly, Aiden Hutchinson had the first Pro Bowl season of his career with 11 and a half sacks, and he has quickly risen to be one of the most feared young defenders in the league today. Just to recap, these are the 8 players who I think played the biggest role in turning this franchise around and how Detroit got them. They finished the 2023-24 season with a 12-5 record, winning the NFC North. In the wildcard round, they defeated an old friend Matthew Stafford and the Rams, and then beat the Tampa Bay Bucks in the divisional round. Thanks to these eight players who were all acquired by the Lions within the past three seasons, the organization has gone from the laughing stock of the league to Super Bowl contenders. With the biggest game in Lions history just one day away, many throughout the country are pulling for these guys to make their first Super Bowl appearance in franchise history. But regardless of what happens Sunday, Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes deserve tons of credit for one of the most efficient rebuilds we've ever seen. Who do you think is most responsible for this turnaround of the Detroit Lions? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like I mentioned earlier, we're on the road to 100k and every subscriber counts. Thank you for watching and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.